Hi guys, this is Bex from Trista Bites, and I was so lucky the other day I got to go and see the world premiere for two episodes from the new 10 part anthology series Philip K. Dick's Electric Dreams and it was so good, I have been so looking forward to this. I love Philip K. Dick's short stories and he's written so many incredible works. So the idea of a bunch of talented British and American producers and directors and styles all coming together and simultaneously basically shooting 10 mini movies to make this anthology series it was really exciting and I'm pleased to report that it was well worth the wait. So on top of getting to see two episodes before everybody else, which was really awesome, I don't get to do this kind of thing often so I'm going to be slightly like eh. I also got to sit in and ask two questions at an interview with Ron D. Moore and Michael Dino, who are two of the producers, they also directed an episode each as well and that was really awesome. They're both really nice guys, really knowledgeable, and the series is definitely in safe hands. I have to say thank you to geektown.co.uk for taking me to this premiere and the next day at Channel 4, and I've just got a little snippet that I can include here. They are all little mini movies. Did you ever actually have all the directors in one place, or the writers? No. They're, they're just sort of, <laughs> I don't think they've they're ever, all done entirely. It's a miracle that the producers have all been in the, in the room <laughs> together. I don't think we have ever remotely had the writers. No. In the the whole idea to begin with was to encourage different points of view. And we felt that the material itself, that the themes of the material would connect all the pieces. I giggle at times when I see these things. Because somehow they feel of a bigger piece, that there's a spine yeah. that connects them all. But they're all different. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, one is a social satire. The next is a dark dystopian universe yeah. love story, like you saw last night. Yeah, those yeah. Are the two last night. I love the fact that you treat the audience as being on the same level as you guys. There's a lot of things going on with media at the moment where things feel very spoon-fed, mm -hmm. and there's really no exposition in these. You just jump straight into the middle of the story. So, is that a conscious decision, or is that something that just came from the source material? Television in general, in movies, there is a a, a general pressure from on high to explain things. Executives get terrified at the possibility that the audience will be confused or they won't understand. And a lot of times you know, that comes from this belief that the audience is not as smart as I am. And one of the nice things about this experience with Channel 4 and Amazon was they kind of didn't have that attitude. You have a conversation about how much to explain, but you can see where we all ended up was didn't really need to explain a lot. You just kind of are dropped into this world and we kind of believe, well, we get it, and we think you're going to get it. Because yeah. you're probably smarter than we are, and I don't have to explain it to you. And you can go to the Hoodmaker world and figure it out. It's some authoritarian, dystopian thing. Yeah. Something bad has happened, and now there's people who are telepaths. Let's move on. You know, it's like, <laughs> I don't need a big crawl at the beginning to sort of say that to you. Yeah. You can just kind of pick it up. It's also the nature of his stuff that somehow there's like that moment in these stories where... You're dropped into it that it becomes clear somehow. What I remember about, you know, I've seen Blade Runner a number of times, but what I remember from the first time I saw it was, yeah, it was a fantastic world and all this stuff, but it's the moment at the end on the rooftop where it becomes really clear. Rutger Howard just wants to live. Mm. Oh, I understand the story. So it's not spoon-fed to you. Yeah. You're kind of along for the ride, and you're kind of leaning and saying, you know, what, what's going on exactly? And then all of a sudden you go, oh, I get it. And, and I think that's the cool thing about these stories. If you want to listen to the whole interview with Rondi Moore and Michael Diner about Electric Dreams, you will need to go onto Geek Town Radio. Uh, I'm gonna be on that episode as well, so I will post on my social media as soon as that one's live. I got to see two episodes back to back, which was really exciting. I only thought I was gonna to get to see one. They were both very much inspired by the world. They're not literal translations from book to screen. These are things where they've invited people in to take the parts they want and create their own mini movies based on the worlds of Philip K. Dick. They also have a book. Where did I put the book? <gasps> They also have a book, which they very kindly gave us all copies of because we went to see it. Um, and the book collects the stories which they have used for the series and it also has a little forward before each story by the, the, the writer-director of each episode explaining what they took and why and what it was they liked about that story. So there's 10 in there plus all the forwards and things, so yeah. It's a quick read, you can do that by the 17th. There was a Q&A after the screening of the two episodes as well where they had more of the producers, writers and cast there, I think about six people there. And that was brilliant to watch as well because there's so much talent involved in this series and based on the two episodes I've seen I, I can't imagine this not getting renewed for another series as well because 
I mean, he, Philip K. Dick wrote like 150 stories. So even if you just narrow that down to short stories and stories that haven't been used already by big title movies and things like that, there's still loads of material that they could use. And hopefully if this goes well, I would love to see them develop on other short story books. Like perhaps they could look at iRobot by Asimov. There's some amazing stories in there, like Robbie the Robot, the first one. I absolutely love that story. Or maybe they could look at Robert Heinlein. Some of his short stories and some of his ideas would make incredible little mini films in that way as well. So he's hoping this is the start of more anthology series. So let me know if you're excited for this series as well and let me know what you think of the episodes when they go up. It will be great to talk to other fans of Philip Kiddick's work in the comments below or if you've never read any of his work and this is your introduction to it, what did you make of it? But thank you very much for watching anyway and you can follow Trista Bites on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and I will see you guys soon. Bye!